Are you thinking of buying a motorhome and are looking for hints and tips on what to buy? Well, stick around because I've got lots of advice for you in choosing a motorhome. We're now well into the new year and the new season of holidays and motorhome shows. Some of you will be thinking of upgrading your motorhome or buying your first one. And when I say motorhome, I also mean camper vans. In this video, instead of telling you what you should go and buy, I'm going to tell you what to look for and considerations for buying one. Best places to look for a motorhome are motorhome shows and dealer showrooms. You can Google motorhome shows near me or motorhome shows 2024 to get an idea of when and where they are. The more motorhomes there are in one place, the more choice you have. When you are there, you can wander around inside them and get a feel for what you like. You can also rent one, go on a week holiday or weekend with one to see if you like the type of holiday before you go and part with your hard-earned cash. First, let's take a look at the different types of motorhome and their pros and cons. Panel vans are basically a van with holes cut out for windows, typically called campers, camper vans or van conversions. The interior is very compact, some don't have a toilet or shower and you may have to make the bed up in the evening due to the lack of space available. These are a very good choice for travelling around town, narrow roads and doing the shopping since they are easy to drive, a bit like driving a car. Depending on its weight, you can normally drive these without a C1 category on your driving licence. Some even convert into people carriers, so it could be your daily runaround and some are no larger than a car. Coach built, or sometimes referred to as C-Class, are your typical motorhome. You know the ones, the big white box type. The living area is built on top of a naked chassis of a van, integrating the driving area called the cab. You can move around inside and stand up and they normally come with a toilet, shower and much more storage space than your typical camper van. Because they are large they are not so easy to drive around the town or narrow roads. The bigger the motorhome the harder it will be to drive and park to get your food shopping. Also road tax costs more and most ferries and toll roads charge more for longer vehicles. Depending on its weight, you normally have to have a C1 category on your driving licence. A motorhome gives you much more space than a camper van and there are a lot of choices regarding layouts and the amount of beds. However, you also need to consider where you're going to store it when you're not using it, say during the winter. Some camper vans can be parked on driveways, but coach builds require a lot more room. A-class motorhomes are very similar to coach-built ones. The main difference is the driving cab of the original chassis isn't used. Instead, the living area and the driving area are together. They are normally more expensive than a coach-built, but you get a better use of space. They normally come with a bed over the driving seats, which drops down at night. This gives you more internal space for larger shower rooms, lounge areas and even an extra bed. American RVs are also A-class motorhomes but they are the size of a bus. They are the most expensive and not really built for narrow streets or driving in towns. They have lots of space in and outside and have large water and waste tanks which can be difficult to empty due to the lack of facilities in the UK and Europe. You will need a C1 category on your driving licence or an HGV licence if the motorhome weighs more than 7.5 tonnes. When looking for a motorhome, there's a number of things you need to look for. First of all, how many of you are going to be using the motorhome? Are there enough beds for the whole family to sleep in? And is there enough room around the dining table to have a meal? One thing I've noticed with some motorhomes is that not all have enough seat belts. For example, a motorhome might be a six berth, but there may only be four seat belts. Then there is the internal layout, how things are organised. Your requirements will be different to other people's. There may only be two of you and you'd like a large lounge and a small kitchen. Or 
you have a family so you may need more beds and storage for clothes. I suggest you make a list of the things you think you're going to need and split them into must-haves and would-likes because you may need to make some compromises. Then go and sit and stand in it. Imagine yourself using it, doing the cooking, the washing up, relaxing, using the bathroom etc. And consider the following. Is there enough space to prepare a meal? Or maybe you like entertaining guests. Will you have to climb over a bed at night in the pitch black to go to the bathroom? Are the ceilings too low? If you're tall, will you be hitting your head on roof lights or cupboards? I've been noticing recently that manufacturers have a tendency to place ovens up high, which can be dangerous. Can you reach the oven or microwave? Where are you going to relax? Is there a lounge area and is it large enough? Where is the TV and will everyone be able to watch it? One thing a lot of people fail to look at is the entrance way. Our motorhome has a very narrow step and a narrow doorway which we tend to fall out of rather than step down. Some motorhomes have multiple small steps which can be a trip hazard or there are no handrails to help you in. At shows and dealerships an extra step is sometimes used to help you get in and out so you may want to find out what it's like without it. One thing you might consider is the size and function of the bathroom. Bathroom, shower room, the toilet room, whatever you would like to call it. It is where a lot of the space is compromised. You may feel that you don't need a toilet or a shower because you'll be using the ones at a campsite but there may be a time where that's not possible such as if you decide to try wild parking or you are stuck on the M6 in a traffic jam and you are bursting. Bathrooms come in different shapes and sizes. Some are wet rooms so everything gets wet when you use the shower and some convert from a toilet room into a shower room with a swinging door or magic. Others have separate toilet and shower rooms. The kitchen area is also another area where space can be compromised. Even the largest motorhomes can have a small, barely functional kitchen. British motorhome manufacturers normally put an oven in their motorhomes, whereas European ones generally don't. This is because Europe has good sunny weather, so eating and cooking are mostly done outdoors, whereas it rains a lot in Britain and eating and cooking is done indoors. If a motorhome doesn't come with an oven, then you can normally get one fitted, but it won't be cheap and you're going to lose cupboard space. Microwaves are easier to install, but will only work if your motorhome is plugged into a campsite's electric hookup. The number of hobs can be an important factor too, especially if you don't have an oven. We have three hobs and no oven in our motorhome and we find that that is enough but I think you're going to need at least one hob just so that you can boil water and have a cup of tea. A lot of motorhomes have a small kitchen sink or no place to dry the washing up like a draining board. Is this going to be a problem for you? Imagine yourself doing the washing up. Where are you going to put it as it's draining? Most campsites have washing up and food preparation areas so this might not be a problem for you. Until that is when it's raining cats and dogs and you and your dry washing up are going to get wet. A bed uses up the largest space in any room, let alone a motorhome. Plus it's only used about eight hours of the day, at night generally. So most of the time it's just a huge waste of space. Lots of motorhomes have you converting the seating area into a bed each evening and you might not mind that. However, it can become a chore, especially if you've come back from a night out or you've just been entertaining guests in your motorhome. What if you fancy the doze during the day or one of you goes to bed earlier than the other? Then a fixed bed might be ideal. Moving on to storage now, I think that a well-designed motorhome is one which uses every available space for storage. I do like seeing innovative storage ideas in motorhomes. When you're looking around a motorhome, consider how much space you have in the different areas. For example, in the kitchen area, where will you be putting your pots and pans? Where is the crockery going to go? Where is your food going to go? 
How large is the fridge and freezer? In the living room, is there enough space for your clothes? Bearing in mind, you may need to take clothes for warm, cold and wet weather. How about the outdoor activities? Is there space to store camping chairs and a table or even a barbecue? Having storage space outside the motorhome also means less space inside the motorhome. For example, a large garage could mean a large fixed bed at the back instead of a panoramic lounge. So you'll need to decide what's more important to you. Finally, driving the motorhome. Driving a motorhome is fairly easy, but can you imagine driving it down a narrow road or even through a narrow gate, maybe into a campsite? They are slower than cars, but they are much larger and heavier, obviously. Bear in mind that you'll need to look out for low overhanging branches and weight, height and width restrictions along the road, and parking at a supermarket can be difficult. Getting into a parking bay might be easy, but leaving the bay can be difficult if someone has parked beside you, stopping you from driving out. Due to the length, you'll take up more width of the road as you pull out of a parking spot or take a tight corner because the sides cut corners and the rear swings out of corners into what is known as tail swing. Is the steering wheel on the left or the right? If you intend to go to Europe a lot, then you might want to consider a left-hand drive. Leaving the most important thing to last, the very first thing you should consider, even before stepping into the motorhome, is whether you can legally drive it on your driver's license. As mentioned before, if the motorhome is three and a half tonnes or more, you will need a C1 category on your license. There are plenty of smaller, lighter motorhomes around three tonnes, which you can drive without a C1. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Next week, I'll be going to the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show at the NEC, and I'll be looking for some budget motorhomes around the 50 or 60,000 pounds mark. If I've missed any tips, then let us know in the doobly-doo. Until then, bye-bye and thanks for watching.